Good day, you all. I am uh, Sylvester Mangolele, and uh, this is the video that you have always been waiting for, as uh, it tells you exactly what had happened in this regard. And then, without any further ado, to get to the video that we need to get to, I want you to understand that we are going to do things in accordance with the Constitution and the law. This is serious. And having the serious nature of the matter, I will take you to this particular point where you would understand it to be true that we are serious. This is the only Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Schlemmer. Thank you, Chief Justice. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I just want to ask you about something that you said when um, I think it was Commissioner Dudor who asked you um, whether you have kind of reflected on everything that went past in the last two interviews. And then concerning the um, delayed just judgments, you said that you looked at some of the previous interviews and you realized that it is important for the commissioners. Is that the only realization that you have? I would like to know what you think about the fact that we do feel it is important that judgments should be delivered on time. I just want to know what your sense of that is, because your answer didn't tell me that you really reflected as to what the meaning is of delivering judgments late. No, I, I, I have accepted the sense of agency and, and I've learned from that. that that's what I, I conveyed to say. Um, or, or I, I had moved, as I indicated, to say I had moved from the premise that there are degrees of agency. You know, there's, there's something immediate and, and, and with a matter that, that's a little bit, that, that needs some time. Because I, I have to state this, I wrote a full judgment on it. I, ju I just didn't give an order to sell right ju uh, reasons later, we, which is a practice that I don't necessarily like, which is perhaps what I ought to have done to give an order and then provide the reasons later. All right, I, I wrote a full judgment and uh, the judgment was accepted because it was never taken anyway, which means I explained the position as I understood it. But, but the point that I was trying to make was to say, I have taken note that uh, judgments should be delivered expeditiously. And that message got across loud and clear. It's because justice delayed is justice denied, sir. Yes, that's true. Correct. Now we understand this particular reality that justice delayed is justice denied. And having that in this particular context, I will take you straight to a recording of the proceedings on the seventh day, on the 17th of November, before we got to the seventh day of December, so that you can know exactly what had happened on that particular day. And then uh, having that knowledge, you can know what was going to happen on the seventh of December and what actually happened on the seventh of December, because there is also a video for the seventh of December of exactly what had happened inside the courtroom. Who did what, who said what, how, and everything that happened in there. I do this to get to the truth. I want you people to understand the truth in this regard. And in understanding the truth, you would understand how one has worn this particular matter. And without any further ado, I will take you to this. And I'm 
but also for you to address my concern. Right. Uh, the papers suggest that there is an existing order in terms of which uh, the court order that if you were to enroll a matter before the court, for you, before that is done, uh, you have to approach the court, bring out the case that you wish to do, that the court considers that, and then grants you permission to proceed. It doesn't appear to me from my view of the paper that you actually did that. In, in other words, the impression that I get is that you enrolled issues to be had without first complying with that rule. Now re remember that, and, and I can sense from your case that it appears that not necessarily agree with the correctness of that rule. My problem is that in as much as you have the right to hold the but a court order remains until it is done. And it must be given in the So it, it would appear to me that you have two approaches that you, that you may have that you did not have. The first is that if you feel that the order that says you must first be permission of the court to enroll any person is wrong and should not be sustained. Your course of action is an appeal that is an appeal either to the full bench of this court. As my reading is that it was an order by a senior judge. Or that you ask me to appeal again to the Supreme Court. That's one thing. The second leg is to accept that it, it, it stands and it says what it says, and for you to pursue the legislation, you then have to comply with its terms. Which would mean then that your first approach would be for a prayer that the court allows you to institute whatever complaint you have against you. So, so as things stand, it, it appears to me that why is that popular thing? You did not seek me to appeal or appeal to a dissatisfied, which is the first course that I indicated, nor did you comply with it with its terms, which is the second case. Now, now you, you, you now have placed before me a man. But there is the process that you have to commence to have commenced to because that court of assay. And, and that's the difficulty with which you are facing now. And, and, and that is why I, I hope that you that pronounce against the background of the request by the respondents to say we are not ready. It would appear to me that you can also not be ready. Because neither do you have with you an order that set aside the order that agrees. That says no, that order no longer applies because it was found to be wrong. Or compliance with that order, an order that says you have been the applied and you have been granted leave to pursue. I, I, I hope you follow what I what I try to explain. So so it appears to me that on the face of it, unless you convince me otherwise, you're sitting with a problem that you need to attend to yourself then.
Yes, it pleases the court, my lord. Uh, I would uh, alleviate that problem that the court currently has in relation to this matter in that regard in this regard it is this the, this application before the court today is in terms of section 18 of the superior court act and it demands certain activities to take place and in section 185 of the superior court act one activity that uh, the plaintiff has taken is to lodge an application and immediately that particular application has been lodged. It's one of the applications that has not been had, my lord. It is to lodge that particular application. Immediately that application is lodged. In terms of Section 18.1 of the Superior Court Act, the execution and operation of that particular order is suspended pending that particular hearing, my lord. And to further eradicate the difficulty that the court find itself with is that the judge who made erroneously that particular order and then directly violated the statutory terms of section four, of section 21b of the vexatious proceedings and we compels that particular judge and when it's my learned lordship takes into consideration article 6 i believe of the judicial code of conduct for judges to actually uphold the actual terms of the law at all times that that particular judge has contravened that particular uh, uh, reality. Uh, 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 I say, I've seen that you're challenging that. Yes. But, I, but I'm saying I cannot put you alone. Which is which is just a judge of appeal over my brother. And 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 I agree fully with yes. with, so, with so your So because lordship. of action, if you want to challenge that order, would be to appeal that. But as I say, appeal is not the only way. Yes. The other way would be compliance with the order, yes. which is to first seek leave. <coughs> which is? And, 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 and now, from reading your application, the truth is what ma, 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 My lord, uh, leave for full bench was sought from the deputy judge president or the judge president, and then they were requested in terms of. Uh, page. But remember, you, you, you applied for me to appeal against the decision to the judge who granted you. Yes, that has been done. And if I may interrupt uh, this particular proceedings, is that you've heard the judge saying that he cannot overturn the matter alone. And immediately, that was agreed with and having agreed on what the judge has said subsequently it is the onus of the judge to bring his brother or sister meaning another judge to actually come and then deal with this particular matter and subsequently that was expected for the 7th of December that is why all the time you were told 7 December it will be a full bench, it will be two judges. There's no craziness there. There's no ambiguity there. It was as clear as the judge has put it himself in this particular record to say, you know, I cannot overturn my brother's decision alone. And I think... And I agree fully with... with, so, with. So. And I agree fully with, with, so, with so your lordship. Because of action, if you want to challenge that order, would be to appeal that. But as I say, I've seen that you're challenging that. Yes. But, but I'm saying, I cannot meet you alone. Which is, which is just a judge of appeal over my brother. And, 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 and I agree fully with, yes. with, so, so with your lordship. Because of action, if you want to challenge that order, would be to appeal that. But as I say, appeal is not the only way. Yes. The other way would be compliance with the order. Yes. Which is to first seek leave. <coughs> which is? And, 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 and now, from reading your application, the truth is not the My, 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 my lord, uh, leave for full bench was sought 
from the deputy judge president or the judge president and then they were requested in terms of uh, page but remember you, you, you applied for me to appeal against the decision to the judge who granted the yes that has been done my lord it okay. even and went was that leave granted? Uh, no yes the leave was granted the leave to appeal the leave to appeal was granted the matter was heard and then still the order was care was 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 held was confirmed yes. yes and then and then and then in holding that particular order it's an issue that the only thing that the plaintiff can do as obligated in terms of section 21c of the vexatious proceedings act is to show good cause for the matter to be rescinded in terms of rule 42 of the uniform rules my lord and because at the instant first instant for one to have to to to, to agree with that particular order invariably one also contravenes the provisions of section 21b of the vexatious proceedings act which compels the your Leonard brother to have had or granted the plaintiff an opportunity of being had my lord so and the plaintiff is a creature of statute is obligated in terms of section 1995 of the constitution to act and is taught and required to act only in accordance with the constitution and the law including customary and international law including all international agreements okay, binding uh, lieutenant commander will be the greatest of respect my lord and i like this particular part where he says lieutenant commander with the greatest of respect What you stand to do now, as I say, there is no other. Uh, uh, you, you either <coughs> further pursue setting that order aside as you want to further higher courts, or you comply. And, and as I say, neither of the two. If you want me to hear the application, the first step that you do for the court to grant permission to proceed as you as 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 the order says right you comply with the terms of that and, I and and once you have complied with the terms of the order then you can proceed to the thing to substantive outcome but in the absence of the granting then you are in default of that order. You are not proper in this and, and, and I, 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 I understand that particular difficulty that the court has, my lord. His lordship would see at the first instant, in the first paragraph of this particular application before his lordship, it actually mentions that particular order in terms of uh, 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 the order issued on 14 September 2018, my lord. And then I'm saying, having regard of it, Yes. yes, and then it is not that the plaintiff did not in any event show good cause and then acknowledge the existence of the order having the respect of the dignity and the accessibility of the court and all its core values. Now, now we, 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 we understand each other now. In that? Yes. Now, what we can do is that we whether there is good cause for the court to grant you an opportunity to proceed with the appeal. We are not dealing with the application itself. No. We are dealing with the, with the, 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 the application by yourself to say I have good cause, I should be allowed to be given. Because the Suprema Faki ground is allowed by statute, right. my lord. Now, now, again, the background of that understanding. Right. Yes. There is a request by, by but maybe before we, we get to that, have you, are you aware of your right to the application? Have you considered that? I have considered that with all due respect, my lord, and then I have persistently 
without fear, pain, or prejudice that denied that particular right to promote the right to absolute representation. Self-representation, my lord, because the goal of this whole thing is for uh, all the people to be heard in accordance with the Constitution and the law. And the so so you, 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 you are well aware of your right to representation, that including the right to As you have heard, the judge saying that we will start at 10, and then starting at 10, I will have the whole day, and if we are not done, it will carry on for the next day. This record, good people, is indeed available in court. You can ask for the court recordings of the court, for the transcripts of it, and then you will see exactly what had happened. And in having to prepare for the Sabbath and doing everything that must be done in order to present the matter, one has done exactly that. And there were a sequence of events that I will cover in uh, what I have prepared because what I have prepared in between the 17th and the 7th of December was to summarily summarize the matter and present the matter to any to, to, to a full bench that will have to rule on the matter. Now, the judge, the Honorable Davis J, as a judge who made this unlawful and intentional misrepresentation that causes actual or potential prejudice to myself, my children, my family, country, and its people, was called to be a witness, to come and say, what did he do? Did he really hear me on the 14th of September 2018 or not? You understand? Because that piece of information is very important for the record of court, for court to also 
make a sound and informed decision. Now, this judge ordinarily would be a, 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 would attend such a court when you ask in terms of section 47 of the Superior Court Act from the judge president to give consent for this particular judge to come to court and then uh, do what must be done in terms of Rule 39 of the Uniform Rules of Court. To procure this evidence, you employ Rule 38. And in employing that Rule 38, the only business you have with the court is the office of the registrar, in which you can sue from it one or more subpoenas. And each subpoena can only have four names of the people and that's why if you have more than four witnesses you have to do two subpoenas if you've got more than five or if more than eight or more than nine you've got to do three subpoenas it is like that and then the the registrar will then sign them and then after they have signed them you will then deliver them to their respective parties as i have done and such person who subpoenaed would come to court on the date agreed. So, here now, we have a presentation, and uh, that particular presentation, it has involved a lot of work from my side. and is as follows the presentation on its own uh, let's get uh, and well don't know whether to give you the full main screen of the presentation let me give you the main screen of the presentation so that you only deal and see the presentation as it is now, Nkosi Sikelela i Africa. God bless Africa. Malupaganyiswe upondo luayo. May her glory, dignity, or horn be lifted high. Yizwa imi tandazo yetu. Hear our prayers. Tina Usa Poloayo, we, her children. Morena Bologa se Chabasai Hesu, God protect our nation. Ofedi se dintu ale matsuenyeho. Banish all wars and hardships. Intervene and end all conflicts. On all conflicts. Ose Bologe, protect us. Ose Bologe se Chabasai Hesu, protect our nation. Sechaba sa South Africa. Protect South Africa. South Africa ate the blow fan on se helmet. Out of the blue of our skies, ate the deep day fan on sea. Out from the depths of our seas. War on sieveche gebertes over our everlasting mountain. Vardi Granse and Vorkie, where the cliff gives answer. Sound the call to come together, and united we shall stand. Let us live and enjoy freedom. Let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. This is in terms of page 243 of the court record in which a division committed to deliver transparent, efficient and equal access to justice for all was approached. In approaching that division, we only had two pages basically of statute to, think, to talk about. And these two pages of statute is what has held my blessings to this day as a result of 
judges not understanding these pages. Let me read it out to you. This is a vexatious proceedings act of 1956 whose preamble is to provide for the imposition of restrictions on institutions of vexatious legal proceedings. In this act, unless the context otherwise indicate, court means any provincial or local division of the Supreme Court of South Africa. State attorney means the officer appointed under paragraph A of subsection 1 of subsection 1 of section 2 of the State Attorney Act. The power of court to impose restrictions on the institution of vexatious le uh, legal proceedings. I have regard of this, but this is not what is at play right now. What is at play is this particular term. If on an application made by any person against whom legal proceedings have been instituted by any other person or who has reason to believe that the institution of legal proceedings against him is contemplated by any other person, the court is satisfied that the said person has persistently and without any reasonable ground instituted legal proceedings in any court or in any inferior court whether against the same person or against different persons. The court may, after hearing that person or giving him an opportunity of being heard, order that no legal proceedings shall be instituted by him against any person in any court or any inferior court without the leave of the court, or any judge thereof, or that inferior court, as the case may be. And such leave shall not be granted unless the court or judge or the inferior court, as the case may be, is satisfied that the, the proceedings are not an abuse of the process of court and that there is a prima facie ground for the proceedings. Prima facie ground is like, are you going to come here and waste our time without any ground? Or do you have a reasonable ground for us to listen to you? The reasonable ground in this particular reality, good people, is the national anthem, which affects us all. When I say let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, that is the prima facie ground. And which statute? requires. So, I don't want you to be confused in this particular regard. C. An order under paragraph A or paragraph B may be issued for an indefinite period or for such period as the court may determine. And the court may at any time on good cause shown rescind or vary any order so issued. Any proceedings under subsection 1 shall be deemed to be civil proceedings within the meaning of paragraph C of section 3 of the Appellant Division Further Jurisdiction Act, 1911, Act 1 of 1911. The registrar of the court in which an order under sub section 1 is made shall cause a copy thereof to be published as soon as possible in the Gazette. Any person against whom an order has been made under subsection 1 who institute any legal proceedings against any person in any court or any inferior court without the leave of the court or judge thereof or that inferior court shall be guilty of contempt of court and be liable upon conviction to a fine not exceeding 100 pounds or to imprisonment for a period not exceeding six months. This act shall be called the Vexatious Proceedings Act. Now, this act has two things. The court may 
and the court may. Two things that happen. It happens once here when the court may, after hearing that person or giving him an opportunity to be heard, it cannot do it on its own as is the case with the plaintiff right now. That is why the plaintiff is sitting in the position, including counsel, is sitting in the position where I don't have to be dilly dallying running up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and trying to do whatever thing that any other person can think in relation to doing this particular matter or bringing justice into this particular matter. Because the matter was not heard. And in an event where the matter is not heard, effectively it's unlawful. I don't know what you are talking about, because when you talk about Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act, we need to be in a position where you have had or given the plaintiff an opportunity of being had before making the order on the 14th. Hmm, that's the law. It's not me. In any event, the court may at any time vary or rescind the order so issued. That is how this thing is. At any time, the court can do that. What is problematic with the court doing this right now? And this, my lord, brings us to the reality where one has to Ask, seriously ask, what is wrong? My Lord, the plaintiff is a man of God. Sutherland J, AJ, AJ at the time, held that counsel really is required to research the law and present an honest account of the law. At para 20 on page 113 of the record, Zaid Rah al Hussein, the United Nations Commissioner for the Human Rights, introduced the Declaration of Human Rights and inter alia said, the power of the Universal Declaration is the power of ideas to change the world. It is it inspires us to continue working to ensure that all people can gain freedom, equality, and dignity. One vital aspect of this task is to empower people to demand what should be guaranteed. They are human rights. These booklets constitute a no modest but significant contribution to that work. The former's bony juris or grieving per se is that the plaintiff was not heard or given an opportunity of being heard before this malamin say in Lex Logai. In simple terms, my lord, is that the smoke of a good right, the former's bony juris, refers to having a sufficient legal basis to bring legal action. Or grave me. The weighing, the things weighing down, the basic element or complaint of a lawsuit, per se, is that the plaintiff was not heard or given an opportunity of being heard before this malamin said. The wrong itself, something considered a universal wrong or evil regardless of the systems of law in effect. It is evil to say that you have heard a person but you did not hear such a person and present such as law in the form of a judgment or a court order. And when his lordship remembers law or conduct inconsistent with the Constitution is invalid, he would then understand that the order issued by Davis J on 14 September is invalid. My Lord, I may not derogate and uh, 
waste the court's time in this particular regard. I'll just only be direct and straight, and then for ease of reference, this particular presentation would be left for the record of court and the enjoyment or the referral of his lordship later on when he makes his judgment for it to be founded on the actual concrete foundings of what of the arguments advanced in the record of court. As it pleases the court, my lord. The Nang Pru Tank in Bonafide. Now for then. Nang Pro Tunk in Bonafide. Nok Pruntung is an action by a court to correct a previous procedural or clerical error. You will do it in good faith. It implies sincere good intentions regardless of the outcome. Regardless of, of the outcome, you would know that the outcome of this particular matter means other people are going to jail. It's not a lie. It is unconstitutional, unlawful, and invalid to unlawfully and intentionally make in terms of Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act a misrepresentation that causes actual or potential prejudice to the plaintiff, country, and its people. The court shall find the order erroneously sought or erroneously granted on 14 September 2018 in the absence of the plaintiff as the affected party is in itself vexatious as it has persistently and without any reasonable ground existed without having regard of the obligations imposed by statute and the good cause shown by the plaintiff for the court to at any time rescind or vary the order so issued and whose copy is on page 100 to page 101 of the record. In the High Court of the of South Africa, as it pleases the court, your lordship, counsel appear in person, is in person before the court to present an aggravating reality of the plaintiff in which the amendment for spoli remedy is sought, following a spoliation in which the defendants took the law into their own hands and resorted to self-help instead of due legal proceedings procedure. The primary source of obligation, vinculum juris, are contract and delict. Other sources include unjustified enrichment, nego negotiorum gestio, unauthorized administration of the plaintiff's affairs, family, relationships, wills, and statute. It is on page 245 of the record, my lord, wherein I explicitly set forth these particular terms. Take notice, this is an application in terms of Rule 11 happening right now. Paperwork happened before. Take notice that in terms of Rule 10 2 of the Uniform Rules of Court, Sylvester Volane Mangolele here in called the plaintiff joins several courses of actions in the same action to be had today on 7 December 2021 at 1000 and applies to the court to in terms of Rule 11 consolidate the above action actions under the following circumstances. Section 21B and C of the Vexatious Proceedings Act 3 of 1956 is substantially the same question of law or fact which shall be determined by a court consisting of not more than three judges as envisaged in terms of Section 14 1A of the Superior Court Act. That is why one expected a full bench today. 
The right to relief of all parties depends upon the admin determination of, this, of substantially the same question of law or fact, which, if separate actions were instituted, would arise on each action. Since the national anthem affects all people in the Republic, and at section 1951G of the Constitution, the Constitution imposes an obligation that public administration must be governed by dem the democratic values and principles enshrined in the Constitution, including the principles that transparency must be fostered by providing the public with timely, accessible, and accurate information. The South African Broadcasting Corporation is commanded in terms of the object of the Broadcasting Act 4 of 1991 to live stream the proceedings so as to educate all people in the Republic to say to God in national prayer, let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. At para 10, in the matter between NDPP and Media 24 and others, the Supreme Court of Appeal held that the right of the media to gather and broadcast information Footage and audio recordings flows from Section 16 of the Constitution. The right to freedom of expression is one of a web of mutually supporting rights that holds up the fabric of the constitutional order. The right is not limited to the right to speak, but to receive information and ideas. The media hold a key position in society. They are not only protected by the right to freedom of expression but are also the key facilitator and guarantor of the right. The media's right to freedom of expression is thus not just or even primarily for the benefit of the media, it is for the benefit of the public. In Kumalo, this is Holomisa, the Constitutional Court emphasized, in a democratic society, then, the mass media play a role of undeniable importance. They bear an obligation to provide citizens both with information and with a platform for the exchange of ideas, which is crucial to the development of a democratic culture. As primary agent of the dissemination of information and ideas, they are inevitably extremely powerful institutions in a democracy and they have a constitutional duty to act with vigor, courage, integrity, and responsibility. Section 21B and C of the Vexatious Proceedings Act is unlawfully and intentionally misrepresented since 14 September 2018 to date to cause the plaintiff harm or potential prejudice in that the Minister of Defense owes the plaintiff more than 15 billion, the South African Human Rights Commission owes the plaintiff more than 50 million, the South African Broadcasting Corporation owes the plaintiff more than 50 million, Cell C Propriety Limited owes the plaintiff more than 80 million. That is why you currently have a situation where people don't want to listen to Mangolele, don't want to give him a fair hearing, don't want to do anything. There's a lot of money involved in this particular matter. And uh, judges are just being bribed. Ah, he's just one man lie about him and do whatever that you must do. Just make sure that he does not get this money. Whatever that you do, he must just not get it. Please. Lie, say hello, laugh with him, postpone the matter as much as you can and do whatever that you can do. He must just not get this money. That is the order that the evil people have done. That is the order that the evil judges have maintained. It is correct. It is like that. I cannot run away from that reality. And having said that, equality means everyone is equal before the law. 
and has the right to equal protection and benefit of the law. Equality includes the full and equal enjoyment of all rights and freedoms. To promote the achievement of equality, legislative and other measures designed to protect and or advance persons or categories of persons disadvantaged by unfair discrimination may be taken. The state may not unfairly discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone on one or more grounds including race, gender, sex, pregnancy, marital status, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscious, belief, culture, language and birth. No person may unfairly discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone against anyone on one or more grounds in terms of subsection 3, which I have just said about. National legislation must be enacted to prevent or prohibit unfair discrimination. Discrimination on one or more grounds of on one or more of the grounds listed in subsection 3 of section 9 is unfair unless it is established that the discrimination is fair. The document further goes to say it was there to the state attorney received by the South African Human Rights Commission and then South African Broadcasting Corporation, they have received this. CLC also received this particular matter. The subpoena, the first person to be called on a subpoena was Madame Elaseral Ramaphosa, who is a black adult male holding the title of the President of the Republic of South Africa as head of the National Executive and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force with a business address as known by the state attorney, and here and after called the second defendant. The second and third witnesses that were subpoenaed was Metandi Mudise and Nosivio Mapisa Ngakula, who are black adult females currently and previously, respectively holding the title of the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans with a business address as known by the state attorney and thereafter called in the third defendant. Becky Kaile, who is a black adult male holding the title of Minister of Police, with a business address as known by the state attorney, and here in called the seventh defendant. That each of them is hereby required to appear in person before this court on Tuesday on, seven, on the 7th day of December 2021 at 10 and in the forenoon and thereafter to remain in attendance until excused by the said court. In order to testify on behalf of the above named plaintiff in, plaintiff in re, regard to all matters within his or her knowledge relating to an action now pending in the said court and wherein the plaintiff claims the relief sought in the notice of motion which in alia includes the replacement of the terms let us live and strive for freedom in south africa our land with let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home in the national anthem a declaration that the plaintiff is not since 8 August 2018 convicted in terms of section 105 of the Defense Act 42 of 2002 to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years as unlawfully and intentionally misrepresented in the DOD personal system to cause actual or potential prejudice for the past 38 months in which the plaintiff is without payment of his salary. A declaration that the plaintiff was not heard or given an opportunity of being heard on 14 September 2018 also obligated, as obligated in terms of Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act 3 of 1996 and a rescission in terms of Section 21C. And declaring that the obligation imposed by the South African Defense Review 2014 and compel the first defendant to arrest the deadline 
and critical capabilities through immediate directed interventions by sending other defendants to jail for life. Inform him or her that he or she is further required to bring with him or her and to produce to the said court all documentations in relation to the plaintiff's alleged administrative discharge from the South African National Defense Force. And inform each of the said persons further that he or she should on no account neglect to comply with this subpoena as he or she may thereby render him or herself liable to a fine of 300 rand or to imprisonment for three months. And what I would want you to take note of here is that the registrar did indeed did not issue this. And when you look at the uniform rules of court in terms of uh, so, uh, uh, giving this particular issue is such that Rule 38, it tells you straight, when you're procuring evidence for trial, you sue out from the office of the registrar one or more subpoenas for that purpose. And having sued out from the office of the, of the, of the, of the, from the office of the registrar one or more of these particular subpoenas. You are sitting in a position where now these subpoenas did not go for everybody, yet they are received by the parties that must come to court. And I made sure that they are received by the parties that they must come to court in order to fulfill enforce compliance. The other witness was Musiwa Samuel Fongwani, who is a black adult male holding the title of Chief of the South African Navy with a business address as known by the state attorney. Colonel Mandela, who is the black adult male holding the title of Officer in Charge, Lexato Cape Town, with a business address known by the state attorney and here in after called the fifth defendant. Mr. Marcel Devet, who is an adult male whose race is unknown to the plaintiff and is the person who unlawfully and intentionally made a misrepresentation that causes actual or potential prejudice in relation to non-payment of the plaintiff's salary with a business address as known by the state attorney. <coughs> Excuse me. Sidiso Tipanye, who is a black adult male holding the title of Chief Executive Officer entrusted with the implementation of the organizational strategy of the South African Human Rights Commission with a business address 132 Water District, Cape Town City Center. <coughs> this was also not signed but received by all parties. And another subpoena is Madota Mkwakwe who is a black adult male holding the title of Group Chief Executive Officer entrusted by supply, entrusted to supply broadcasting and information services and services that are in ancillary there to the general public in the Republic of South Africa and beyond its borders to achieve the objectives as set out in the Broadcasting Act 4 of 1991, 1999 in accordance with the objectives set out in the Independent Broadcasting Authority Act with a business address 209 Beach Road, Seapoint, Cape Town. Last two witnesses were Yaya John Mandlaiki Sehlope, who is a black adult male holding the title of Judge President of the Western Cape Division, who on 26 October 2021 acted in a willful or grossly negligent conduct that is incompatible with the unbecoming <coughs> or unbecoming of the holding of judicial office, including any conduct that is prejudicial to the independence, impartiality, dignity, accessibility, efficiency, and effectiveness of the courts. To arbitrarily or without just cause deprive the plaintiff access to court while on duty as an agent judge with a business address, High Court, South Africa, Western Cape. Dennis Davis, who is a white male 
holding the title as a judicial officer who unlawfully and intentionally made a misrepresentation on 14 September 2018 that causes actual or potential prejudice to the plaintiff with a business address, High Court of South Africa, Western Cape Division, Kirov Street, Cape Town. And having given those particular subpoenas, issuing subpoena in civil proceedings against the judge in terms of section 47 of the Superior Court Act number 10 of 2013, the Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa is directed to give consent for the head of court, Judge President Lope, and the judge of the Superior Court, the Honorable Davis J. Dennis Davis J. to appear in civil action before a full bench on 7 December 2021 at 100 in order to testify on behalf of the above named plaintiff. In regard to all matters within his knowledge relating to an action now pending in the said court and wherein the plaintiff claims the relief sought in the notice of motion which in Ta'ilia includes, excuse me, please, let me, this. Mangolela, hello? All right, then you. Given I'm busy right now, man, recording, let's talk later, please, if you don't mind, please, please, thank you. Yes, and uh, we are back in that regard where in regard to all matters with his knowledge relating to an action now pending in the said court and wherein the plaintiff claims the relief sought in the notice of motion which inter alia includes the replacements of the terms let us leave and strive for freedom in South Africa, our land with let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home in the national anthem. A declaration, as already I foresaid, and all these things. So here I was notifying the Chief Justice to say, Chief Justice, there is a matter on the seventh, and only you as the Chief Justice can give consent in relation to this particular matter, because a judge president is being called to come testify. It is true that everyone is equal before the law. Don't get confused by titles. Ooh, Chief Justice. Ooh, Judge President. No. Ooh, President. Eh, everyone. Are they not people? Are they? They are people. So please, good people, don't get confused when I call a person to court and say, come to court, I have every right to do so. The security of this particular republic, defending everyone. I defend everyone here. How can I defend everyone, but I cannot call, I cannot call everyone? Hmm? Which one is that? So, those are the realities that we are currently having at this particular point in time. That was gone to the Chief Justice. And having gone to the Chief Justice, it's an issue where the Chief Justice never responded to this to the state. All the parties received it as per always, and then here it is pro procuring evidence for trial to the registrar. I sent it. Take notice that the Honorable Mr. Daniel Malefu Tulare J ordered a trial date for the matter to be heard on Tuesday, 7 December 2021 at 1000. And in terms of Rule 38.1a, the plaintiff desires the attendance of all persons as sued out from the office of the registrar as nearly as may be in accordance with Form 16 of the schedule of the uniform rules. So rule 38.1a provides that any party desiring the attendance of any person to give evidence at a trial may as of right without any prior proceedings whatsoever sue out from the office of the registrar one or more subpoenas for that purpose. 
each of which subpoenas shall contain the names of not more than four persons and service thereupon uh, says and service thereupon and service thereof upon any person therein named shall be affected by the sheriff in a manner prescribed by rule four and the process of subpoena subpoenaing such witness shall be as nearly as may be in accordance with form 60. if any witness has an in position has in his position or control any deed instrument writing or thing which the party require during his attendance desires to be produced in evidence the subpoena shall specify such document or thing and require him to produce it to the court at the trial. Council commands the office of the registrar not to derogate from this rule and issue the subpoena as directed. There is no need to call any meeting with any judge or any party from the office of the registrar or, the, or any party for the office of the registrar to simply act in accordance with this rule. And in any event, no person or organ of state may interfere with the functioning of the courts. It is true. So this part of the admin was done, and then this is the letter from the Judicial Conduct Committee where complaint against Judge Davis of the Western Cape of the High Court was received by the Secretary of the Judicial Service Committee. And then this is received by all parties to know that the judiciary is at work. <laughs> so now, having regard of this, we come to the issue where I show you the exact thing where now a complaint against the Honorable Davis J, and then I will take you through quickly through it. I know it's daunting, but it's important for the record of court to know what had happened. It's a particulars of complaint, and then particulars of a judge, and then nature of the complaint is in terms of Section 143B1 of the Judicial Service Commissions Act. It wants that removal of. Uh, Davis J on the grounds that he suffers from incapacity, gross incompetence, and gross misconduct. Attached here to marked SVM1 is an unlawful and intentional misrepresentation made by the Honorable Davis J with the intention of unlawfully impairing, violating, threatening, or endangering the existence, independence, or security of the Republic, unlawfully changing the constitutional structure of the Republic, unlawfully overthrowing the government of the Republic, or unlawfully coercing the government of the Republic by violence into any action or into refraining from any action. There is no judgment which qualifies the fraudulently obtained court order. The court, under, the court order sustains the unlawful address attached here to marked SVM2. SVM2 is this unlawful address. That is SVM2. SVM1 is the court order itself and so forth. The facts on which the complaint is based, as required by Section 143B1 of the Judicial Commissions Act, the Honorable Davis J. is of the Western Cape Division, suffer from incapacity, is grossly incompetent, and or is guilty of gross misconduct to unlawfully and intentionally make on 14 September 2018 a misrepresentation that causes actual or potential prejudice to Sylvester Bolani Mangolele as the first respondent to case number 15141 of 2018 by presenting as fact of law that he has had Sylvester Mangolele or granted 
him an opportunity of being heard before making an order in terms of Section 21B and C of the Vexatious Proceedings Act, while the reality is that the plaintiff was never heard or granted an opportunity of being heard before making an order on, 20, on 14 September 2018. The grounds upon which this complaint against the Honorable Davis J is lodged are as follows. Incapacity giving rise to the Honorable Davis J inability to perform the functions of office in accordance with the prevailing standard of gross incompetence or gross misconduct. The prevailing standards when you deduce these things. The code shall serve as the prevailing standard of judicial conduct which ma judges must adhere to and that any willful or grossly negligent breach of the code may amount to misconduct. Gross incompetence, Article 10, 1 of the Code of Judicial Conduct obligates judges to take reasonable steps to maintain the necessary level of professional competence in the law Section 35.3e of the Constitution imposes an obligation that every accused person has a right to a fair trial, which includes the right to be presented to be present when being tried. Read with the statutory provision of Section 2.1b of the Vexatious Proceedings Act that the court may, after hearing that person or giving him an opportunity of being heard, order that no legal proceedings shall be instituted by him. Gross misconduct, a derogation from Section 37.5 of the Constitution, resulting on a legislation court order enacted or other action taken in consequence of the court order permitting or authorizing the state or any person in respect of any unlawful act against Sylvester Volan Mangolela being intended. Willful, grossly negligent breach of the judicial code. The Honorable Davis J did not take reasonable steps to enhance the accessibility of the courts and to improve public understanding of the judicial proceedings in open court, and did not make known his supporting reasons to the order or decision issued on 14 September 2018. Article 6 of the Code mandates a judge to, at all times, also in relation to extrajudicial conduct, comply with the laws of the land. Davis J. did not comply with the law as obligated in terms of Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act to hear or grant Sylvester Volane Mangolele an opportunity of being heard before making the order on 14 September 2018. It is further submitted that the, in conducting judicial proceedings, Davis J. did not give special attention to the right to equality before the law and the right to equal protection and benefit of the law, did not refrain from being biased or prejudiced in the performance of judicial duties as obligated in terms of Article 7 of the Code and in any event. Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides that everyone has a right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Another willf other willful or grossly negligent conduct that is incompatible with un or unbecoming to holding the judicial office, including any conduct that is prejudicial to the independence, impartiality, dignity, accessibility, and or effectiveness of the court. The Honorable Davis J. did not uphold the independence and integrity of the judiciary and the authority of the courts, did not maintain an independence of mind in the performance of uh, judicial duties, did not act fiercely on according and according to his conscience because a judge is only accountable to the law, and perform all professional duties free from outside influence. Independence in Note 4 of Article 4, the Code of the Code of uh, Judicial Conduct, provides that judicial independence is not a private right or a, or, a, or a principle for the benefit of judges as individuals. 
It denotes freedom of conscience for judges and non-interference in the performance of their decision-making. It, it does not justify judicial misbehavior and does not provide an excuse for failing to perform judicial functions with due diligence or for otherwise acting contrary to this code. It is therefore tried that all activities of a judge must be compatible with the status of judicial office as obligated in terms of Article 5 of the Code. The current aggravating realities of Mangolele is that showing good cause in terms of Section 2.1c of the Vexatious Proceedings Act 3 of 1956 for the court on 26, 2021, at 10 hundred or as soon thereafter as the parties may be had to rescind the order or judgment erroneously sought or erroneously granted or issued on 14 September 2018 in the absence in terms of case number uh, 15141 of 2018. The matter was not here. Other than this, good people is just only a repetition which tells you firmly that uh, I am here. My Lord, this action is for crimes against the state and the administration of justice in which the defendants are called to admit or deny a charge of high treason set out in the issues raised at page 6 at para 4 of the record of court in the plaintiff's practice note and succinctly argued on page 19 at para 1.4 of the plaintiff's heads of argument and the elements of crime are on page 106, 107 at para 5 of the record of court. The issues that the court must deal with is unlawful and intentional engagement of senior government officials owing allegiance to the Republic of South Africa, defeating or obstructing the administration of justice with the intention of violating, threatening or endangering the existence, independence or security of the Republic, or changing the constitutional structure of the Republic to subject the plaintiff into a state of homelessness, torture, slavery, cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment, arbitrary laws of past and future income for the past 38 months, and arbitrary deprivation of property. My Lord, On 20 June 2018, at or about 5 past 8, an act of parliament that authorizes a declaration of a state of homelessness and legislation enacted or other action taken in consequences of a declaration by the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, as the head of the state, head of the national executive and commander-in-chief of the South African National Defense Force, permitted or authorized indemnifying the first defendant or any person in respect of any unlawful act in relation to the underside. The any derogation from the Constitution and the law. Any derogation from the section mentioned in column one of the table of non-derogable rights to the extent indicated opposite that section in column three. It is submitted that the incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa seriously violated the Constitution or the law threatening or endangering the existence, independence, or security of the Republic, or unlawfully and intentionally changing the constitutional structure of the Republic by directing that the undersigned must live and struggle for freedom in, and for freedom raising a family in the streets of the South African of the South Africa, our land. 
the incumbent president Cyril Ramaphosa is also called to admit or deny the charge of high treason. This charge of high treason applies mutatis mutatandis, mutandis to all defendants and are called to admit or deny. At, para, at page 19, para 1.4, all defendants must satisfy the court that on the argument supra and, the and, and prove beyond any reasonable doubt that as persons owing allegiance to the Republic, their conduct, act or omission, was not unlawful and intentional. It is tried that all defendants are subject to defendants are subject to chapter 11 of the Constitution as security service who must act and must teach and require their members to act in accordance with the Constitution and the law including customary international law and international agreements binding on the Republic and in any event only the president may cancel a permanent permission of the plaintiff it is submitted that the process embarked on by the defendants to unlawfully and intentionally deprive the plaintiff his salary for the past 38 months is unconstitutional, unlawful, and invalid. And the defendants are put to its validity. So good people things are like that and having things being like this as set out already here are the elements the elements of treason is that the perpetrators must owe allegiance to the republic Their conduct, act or omission, and the lawfulness or unlawfulness of their respective conduct is another thing, an element that must be considered by the court, and their intention. The argument referred to is on page. 18 at para 1.3 people in the universe the republic of south africa and the entire south african national defense force coerced to firmly believe that an unlawful and intentional false entry on the dod personal system on 8 august 2018 and nine days later on 17 august writing a letter to be delivered in the middle of the following week to Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volano Mangolele is the lawful precedence for termination of service of members of the regular force. It is argued that it is an absolute miscarriage of the founding values of the first defendants relative to the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. The founding value of the first defendant is uh, the provisions of section 3 or yeah, the, the obligations imposed there too, which includes uh, that everyone has a right to fair labor practices and when an erudite judge reads the provisions with the obligations imposed in terms of section 1995 of the constitution it will understand the gross violation of the constitution by all defendants this is the reality that one faces this is the reality that one wants. My lord, the lady, page 106 of the record at para 3, 
calls the court to be faithful to the Republic of South Africa and protect the const co protect constitution and the human rights entrenched in it and administer justice to all persons alike without fear, favor, or prejudice in accordance with the constitution and the law. Article 6 of the Code of Judicial Conduct has been explicitly elaborated in this particular proceedings, my lord. And Judge President DeVette held that the functions of this court, as is the functions of the court in any other country, is to enforce the law and order and to enforce the laws of the state within which it functions. As in page 447 of Long Walk to Freedom. My Lord, having regard of the obligations imposed in terms of section 38 of the Constitution, the plaintiff's local standing is as security of the Republic of South Africa. It is the plaintiff's duty to, in terms of section 38 of the Constitution, enforce the Bill of the Rights in the Bill of Rights by approaching a competent court alleging that a right in the Bill of Rights has been infringed or threatened, and the court may grant appropriate relief, including declaration of rights. The plaintiff approached the court in terms of Section 18 of the Superior Court Act, read with Rule 612A of the Uniform Rules of Court. Acting in, own, in my own interest, acting on behalf of all more than 60 million people in the Democratic Republic of South Africa who cannot act in their own name, acting as a member of the South African National Defense Force or in the interest of my country and its people, the group or class of persons in my family, acting in the public interest and senior officer in the military acting in the interest of its members. The court then has to pass begin in the following terms. Having regard of the obligation imposed in terms of Section 13 of the Constitution, must all live and struggle for freedom in South Africa, our land, or must all live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home? Is the plaintiff convicted to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years since 8 August 2018 in terms of Section 105 of the Defense Act of 42? 2002 or <clears throat> and was the plaintiff had or given an opportunity of being had as obligated in terms of section 21b of the vexatious proceeding section South, Af South Africa is one as contemplated in terms of Section 1 of the Constitution, as the plaintiff is one, as his name is Sylvester, and so is counsel in persona to the one before court. One, and one, at Chapter 11 of the Constitution, defines the plaintiff as security of the Republic, who in turn is introduced as follows. The Magna Carta, the American Declaration of Independence, the Petition of Rights and the Bill of Rights are documents which are held in veneration by Democrats throughout the world. Taking of an oath, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will take this obligation freely without any mental reservations or purpose of evasion, 
and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. My name is Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele. South Africa is on my shoulders. I serve and defend my country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law and with honor, dignity, courage, and integrity. I serve in the South African National Defense Force with loyalty and pride as a citizen and a volunteer. I do not advance or harm the interest of any political party or organization. I accept personal responsibilities for my actions. I obey all lawful commands and respect all my superiors. I refuse to obey a manifestly illegal order. I carry out my mission with courage and assist my comrade in arms even at the risk of my own life. I treat all people fairly and respect their rights and dignity at all times, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, culture, language, or sexual orientation. I respect and support my subordinates and treat them fairly. I do not abuse my authority, position, or public funds for personal gain, political motive, or any other reason. I report criminal activity, corruption, misconduct, to the appropriate authority. I improve the capabilities of the South African National Defense Force by maintaining discipline, safeguarding property, developing skills and knowledge, and performing my duties diligently and professionally. I am the South African National Defense Force. I defend the Republic of South Africa, and I save its people. I am the pride of the nation. I consist of the Army, the Air Force, I, the South African Navy, and the South African Military Health Services, all of whom encompass into one unified force, which is the South African National Defense Force. My area of responsibility is everything in the country. As I am security of the border of the country. Everything happening in this particular republic is my business. Any person who does not follow the constitution or the law in this country that I serve and defend is my business. It is my business to ensure that the law is upheld at all times. And this includes at the economic exclusive, exclusive economic zone in our continental shelf. I am the security of the Republic. I stand for South Africa as a nation equal in the family of nations. May it please the court to, in terms of section four of the constitution, know that only the president may, by proclamation, determine the replacement of the terms, let us live and strive for freedom in South Africa, our land with the terms, let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, in the national anthem of the Republic. The term strife is in direct assault with the obligations imposed in terms of section 13 of the Constitution which provides that no one may be subjected to slavery, servitude, or forced labor. Only a slave lives and struggle, strive, attempt, or try for freedom in their land. In a democratic republic, of South Africa. We are not slaves. 
Article 4 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights read with Section 13 of the Constitution imposes an obligation that no one may be subjected to slavery, servitude, or forced labor, and the slave trade shall be prohibited in, in all their forms. Section 1951 of the Constitution imposes an obligation that public administration must be governed by democratic values and principles enshrined in the Constitution, including the following principles. People's needs must be responded to and the public must be encouraged to participate in policy making. Public administration must be accountable. Transparency must be fostered by providing the public with timely, accessible and accurate information. In the case of Emmanuel Levis State of Kera, available in that particular platform, is copied. On 11 August 1986, the Supreme Court, Court of Final Appeal, concluded by stating, our tradition teaches tolerance. Our philosophy preaches tolerance. Our constitution practice tolerance. Let us not dilute it. After setting aside the high court judgment which held that page eight, standing up silently, clearly does not, does not either prevent the singing of the national anthem or cause up disturbance to the assembly engaged in such singing. This was after in, nine, in July 20, in July 1985, three children were expelled from their school after they refused to sing the national anthem of India, Jana Gana Mana. They objected to singing their anthem because it was allegedly against the religious faith of Jehovah's Witness. The Supreme Court ordered the state of Karal to readmit them to school on the basis that the expulsion from school violated the children's rights to freedom of expression and religion. May it please the court. The law laid down by the Supreme Court of India binds all courts within the territory of India under Article 141 of the Constitution. Therefore, this case has presidential effect. Remembering that the plaintiff is obligated to, in terms of Section 391B and C read with Section 233 of the Constitution, which provides for consideration and application of foreign law. While Section 3232 of the Constitution imposes an obligation that customary international law is law in the Republic unless it is inconsistent with the Constitution or an Act of Parliament. Council submit that there is no inconsistency with Article 141 of the Constitution of India with the provisions of Section 1655 of the Constitution, which similarly provides that an order or decision issued by a court binds all persons to whom and organs of state to which it applies. Section 15 of the Constitution imposes an obligation that everyone has the right to freedom of conscience, religion, thought, belief, and opinion. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Notwithstanding any other issue on record of court, slavery is argued as an urgent issue on the plaintiff's heads of argument at para 5.1a on page 29 as envisaged in the founding affidavit at paragraph 25.1 on page 41 and as submitted at paragraph 43f on page 49 that only a slave live to strive for freedom in their land. The court 
the issue of slavery is argued extensively on the heads of argument at para 4.1f on page 24 and defined in the heads of argument as para 410 on page 27. Its agency contemplated at para 5.3 on page 30 includes the best interest of the children including their children's children for generations to come. Contrasting dread, Scott, whose citizenship was denied by the Supreme, U.S. Supreme Court on, nine, on 6 March 1957, and therefore not entitled to freedom, the Supreme Law of the Republic at, 20, at Section 20 imposes an obligation that no citizen may be deprived of citizenship. In observance of the uniform rules of court, having regard of the obligations imposed, the framework of state statute on debate at section 15.2a of the Constitution. Religious observance may be conducted at state or state-aided institution, provided that those observations follow rules made by the appropriate public authority. Therefore, the court will be pleased that the court will be pleased that the provisions of Rule 612 be argued as the plaintiff has set forth explicitly the circumstances here there's renders render the matter urgent and the reasons why he claims that he could not be afforded substantial redress at the hearing in due course. And in terms of Section 21 of the Vexatious Proceedings Act, the court shall be satisfied that the proceedings are not an abuse of the process of the court and that slavery of all people in the Democratic Republic of South Africa and their freedom enshrined in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution is a prima facie ground for the proceedings. Notwithstanding good cause shown by the plaintiff as obligated in terms of Section 21C of the Vexatious Proceedings Act, the Constitutional Court in Benish and Arda and another versus Ernest and Young and others held that. While such an order may well be far-reaching in relation to the, that person, it is not immutable. There is an escape from the restrictions as soon as prima facie case is made in circumstances where a judge is satisfied that the proceedings uh, so instituted will not constitute an abuse of the process of court. When we measure the way in which this escape hatch is open in relation to the pep purpose of the restriction, for the purpose of Section 361D, it is clear that it is not as onerous as the applicant contended, nor unjustifiable in an open and democratic society which is committed to human dignity, equality, and freedom. The application right the applicant's right of access to court is regulated and not prohibited. The more remote the proposed litigation is from the causes of action giving rise to the order or the persons or institutions in whose favor it was granted, the easier it will be to provide bona fides and the less chances there is for the public interest being harmed. The closer the proposed litigation is to the above mentioned causes of action or persons, the more difficult it will be to provide bona fides. And rightly so, because the greater will be the responsibility that the public interest may be harmed. The procedure with the section contemplated therefore allows for a flexible 
proportionality balancing to be done, which is in harmony with the analysis adopted by this court and ensures the achievement of the snugget fit to protect the interest of both applicant and the public. While the judge orders in terms of section 21B that no legal proceeding shall be instituted by the subject, the subject of the order against any person in any court or in any inferior court, leave to institute proceedings are to be granted where a judge is satisfied that the proceedings are not an abuse of the process of the court and that there is a prima facie ground for the proceedings. South Africa is a constitutional dispensation at, at the outset. I would like to start by making an important point that access to justice is bedrock to democracy. Section 34 of the Constitution provides that everyone has the right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing before a court or where appropriate another independent and impartial uh, tribunal or forum. The Honorable Zweni A.J. on 10 September 2021 held the averments advanced herein and in concurrence at Para 34 of case number 1845 of 2021 in the matter between Price Waterhouse Coopers Incorporation versus Dion Johan Pinar and another presented by counsel is cited with approval as follows. While the court is the same thing that I have just read. While such an order may be far reaching, da, 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 as I've already said, stated there, it's that. The court must consider the issues as the Honorable D4J put at para 15 in Christian Christensen, no, versus Richard. Are the proceedings launched by the first respondent against the state and or its executors an abuse of the court process? To in terms of section four of the constitution compel the president here in after called the second defendant of the republic to cause people to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, cannot be written in the history of the jurisprudence as bearing no reasonable grounds to institute legal proceedings to stop the entire republic from living and struggling, striving or attempting for freedom in South Africa or land. The last stanza includes the highest note of the national anthem in which all fellow South Africans deliver with all their hearts, with all their souls, and all their strengths, the goal of the national anthem of our republic. And such goal must never, never, never again be let to live, uh, be to live and struggle, strive or attempt for freedom in South Africa or land. And it will be the judicial authority of this court having regard the obligations imposed in terms of the Constitution as the supreme law of our country. We, the people of South Africa, recognizes the injustices of our past to henceforth and for generations to come live and enjoy freedom in the universe of our home. This is Fox, Fox Crawford J talking about uh, the rights of the child which cuts across, which effectively cuts across the parents' rights. Page 107 and para 8 addresses all amendments advanced by my learned friend on record representing all defendants. Given the reality of all amendments leading to this hearing, 
It is submitted that the agency of this matter is long overdue considering the unlawful and intentional conduct which defeat or obstruct the administration of justice to a point where the court is without an original copy issued but a duplicate instead. This argues the agency at page At page 108 and 107, page 05 is the notice of intention to oppose, and so forth. On page 90 is also the submissions by council, and then we looked at the rules and then completed, completed based on the rules. So, This is what stands in court. The agency of this matter is an all-encompassing national security condition in which, as a citizen of, this, uh, of South Africa and a volunteer in the South African National Defense Force, the undersigned is homeless, tortured, enslaved, live without freedom, peace, and safety, unable to participate fully in the process of democratic governance, can't change the national anthem, for example, Deprived enjoyment to protection of fundamental rights, including unlawful and intentional denial of his parental responsibilities and rights, without access to resources and the basic necessities of life. plaintiff is inhabiting an environment which is detrimental to his wealth, health, well-being, and bodily integrity. It's arbitrary or without just cause deprived of salary since 8 August 2018. It's presumed guilty until proven innocent and unlawfully and intentionally deprived security and of land and tenure number four cable hill road summer stone seven nine seven five and comparable redress and i have submitted that the agency of this matter is long overdue by 38 months as the plaintiff of the plaintiff having to beg people for their own money to survive while the defendants are living comfortably with impunity, albeit it is true and correct that the Constitution is the supreme law of the Republic. Law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid and the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. It is submitted that the plaintiffs is on duty 24-7 as a juristic person who is entitled to the rights in the Bill of Rights to the extent required by the nature of the right and the nature of the juristic person mandated by an act of parliament to arrest the decline in critical capabilities through immediate directed interventions. It is in terms of the South African Defense Review 2014 and in any event, immediate directed intervention as an, as an, is an agent action. A delict is a wrongful and blameworthy conduct that causes harm. On page 108 at para 9, emphasis is put on the Constitution, section 23, 1, and the law, section 59, 1D of the Defense Act. This fulfills the obligations imposed by the first line of the plaintiff's code of conduct. Page 14 to 16 are uh, an unavoidable reality that a court may not dispute in any event, as it is the law of our democratic 
Republic that the plaintiff's life is entrusted to the nation of Israel. On page 8 to 11 of the record, the specific roles of the parties. These roles are constitutional obligations that must be fulfilled when the court comes to a decision to give effect to the plaintiff's rights in the Bill of Rights. It is there that everybody must do. The court must fulfill the obligations imposed by the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law as directed on page 109. Here is the obligations that must be fulfilled. First is section 21. Number two is section 7 of the Constitution. The third prayer is section 10 of the Constitution. The fourth prayer is section 11. The fifth prayer is section 12. The seventh prayer is section 13. And then... Uh, Fulfill the obligation imposed in terms of uh, this state. Hmm. So those are the things that must further be done. We come to clause twenty eight. Divorced or separated members. And uh, we must take a body break from this. I must stop the recordings and then I will be back in that particular regard. I will be back from here. Let's.